Welcome back friends. Welcome to another video tutorial from Shomu's Biology. And in this video lecture, we are going to talk about nuclear transport. In past few video lectures, we are discussing about the different modes of protein transport inside a cell. Here we are interested about how the proteins are delivered inside nucleus. Now the first question is, why we need to deliver proteins inside the nucleus? Because the idea of protein synthesis always takes place in the cytosol. While mRNA is produced in the nucleus, transport it into the cytosol and then it's translated into the target proteins. Now here, if you rem remember in eukaryotes, the DNA is wrapped around histones and histones should be delivered inside the nucleus so that the nucleosome structure can form. So this is one example where we see the requirement of protein delivery inside the nucleus. So the question is how exactly the process of nuclear transport will be mediated. If you look at the nuclear structure, you will see there are nuclear pores that are found in the nuclear envelope. So there are gaps. If we zoom into the structure of nuclear pore in a schematic drawing, what we can see is something like this. I'll try to draw a structure similar like this this similarly let, let me draw another structure in this side as well okay let's say it will look something like this and it will look something like this so this is kind of an overall schematic drawing for the nuclear pore in a side view if you look at from top this is the top region of the pore and there are different nuclear uh, ring and basket structures and there is also these arms coming in and out of a nuclear pore and rest of the regions are the nuclear envelope that as we know now here what we are interested in is to think about how different proteins go inside the nucleus and come outside of the nucleus now to understand that first thing that you know is that if there are smaller proteins that can easily diffuse through this a nuclear pore, nuclear envelope pore into the nucleus, okay. But for big proteins like histone, they cannot take direct entry. They require an active transport process, right. So there are these two processes, passive, passive transport for smaller proteins and active transport for large proteins like histones. Here we will see how exactly the active transport across the nuclear envelope is carried out. For that to understand what you need to know is we need to know about a protein known as RAN. RAN is a protein which is vital for the transfer of target proteins in and out of a nucleus. Now RAN is a GTP binding protein. So RAN can bind with GTP or GTP. The idea is whenever it's GTP form, RAN remain attached to it. But once GTP gets hydrolyzed into GDP and PI, GDP will be released from the RAN and RAN protein will become free. So think about the cycle of RAN, GTP and GDP first. This is the primary thing that you should understand before talking about the protein transport. So let's look at the RAN, GTP, GDP cycle. The idea here is simply to create RAN along with GTP inside the nucleus. That is the idea. So actually let me draw it, oh, let me draw it inside the nucleus. So RAN attached with GTP. While on the other hand, well, there is GDP and inorganic phosphate is re released from there after the hydrolysis of GTP that RAN will be outside of the nucleus. So these are the two states for RAN. Now they keep circulating between the states. For example, if I draw an arrow to explain this thing to you, it will be like this. So as you see, RAN while attached to GTP only gets the license to go out, go out of the nucleus. Remember this, this is very, very important. So if RAN is attached with GTP, then only it have the license to 
it has the license to transfer out of the nucleus and once the GTP gets hydrolyzed into GDP and PI that will be released and that RAN will not be able to to go in uh, that RAN will only be able to go in in the GDP attached form so this cycle repeated several times so the process working in a way that only then GTP can go out and RAN without any GDP or in, uh, with the GDP form can only come inside or in a free RAN can only come inside. Now the question is how exactly it remain attached to GTP or get hydrolyzed. There are accessory proteins involved in substituting RAN GDP with GTP and also hydrolyzing GTP into GDP. Those factors are named as GAP and GIF. We need an enzyme known as GEF or guanine nucleotide exchange factor that helps in the process of transfer of GTP and release of GDP. So it substitutes GDP with GTP in the RAM. While there is another protein known as GAP known as GTPS activating protein and GTPS activating protein helps in the hydrolysis of GTP into GDP which is acting outside of the nucleus. So here you can see GIF, I don't think you can see the bottom part anyways, till here I will explain. GIF transfers GTP, attach GTP to RAN while GAP helps in hydrolyzing GTP into GTP plus PI. GIF works in the nucleus, GAP works outside of the nucleus in the cytosol. Now they cannot shuffle this place. So they have separate regions for working. So once you understand this cycle of RAN, GTP and GDP, now it's time to understand how the cargo protein will be delivered in or out. Now for transporting this cargo proteins, this RAN protein cannot directly bind to the cargo. You know what is cargo? Cargo is the exact protein that needs to be delivered. Okay. So RAN is unable to directly bind with cargo. So here comes the cargo protein, but RAN cannot directly interact. So it has a third protein to interact with both and known as importing or exporting. We also call, call them like nuclear import receptor or nuclear export receptor okay the import receptor involved in the process of importing a protein in the nucleus while export receptor process the job of transferring a protein from the nucleus into the cytosol okay so while we're transferring mrna exporting play important role while we're taking histones inside the nucleus import receptors are important plays a vital role so here let's first talk about this import receptor the idea is we simply draw it as s shaped proteins if we draw as an s shaped protein what you will see is there are two domains two regions where two separate things can bind so one region where the cargo can bind and another region where the ran can bind okay and now this receptor proteins can go in and out so in this case we are looking at import receptor so import receptor working in a way that their job is to transfer a cargo protein inside the nucleus now the idea here is we have those we have those as shaped proteins out there and let's say cargo gets attached to one of the domains and the other region where the ran bound is the ran gdp so binding of ran gdp will not allow uh, this cargo protein to be to be removed here because if you look at the structure of these import receptors you will find that this import receptor can bind with cargo and ran in gdp form only but if the ran is present in gtp form then cargo will be removed because while ran in gtp form attaches there it alters the structure of this import receptor that causes the cargo to be removed so here at the beginning either we have the import receptor with only cargo 
or even though we have ran uh, the ran should be free from any gtp so here we go with ran and then this import receptor goes inside because for going inside we don't need any signal we don't need ran gtp nothing so now it's transferred inside the cell uh, inside the nucleus once it's inside the nucleus which i'll draw here so this is uh, how it looks like here inside the nucleus we have the cargo and uh, the ran is there so now the idea is once this gif transfers the gtp to the ran ran becomes attached with gtp and this ran gtp as i told you if the import receptor bound to ran gtp it undergoes a conformational change that will kick the cargo out so here once the RAND GTP is attached, cargo will be removed and thus will be delivered inside. Actually this process is working inside the nucleus. I don't have much space because uh, the board is ending here. I think the view is ending here. That's why I am drawing it here. But actually this means inside. This is the border. This is inside the nucleus. Okay. So once RAND GTP is attached there, cargo protein falls off and it's delivered inside the nucleus. That's how easy it is. And then the RAN, uh, then we have this import receptor with RAN GTP, it will be transported out. And once it's transported out, that RAN GTP again hydrolyzed into GDP makes the receptor again free to interact with a second cargo. And the process continues like that. Okay, so that's the job repeating for the import of a protein inside the nucleus. Now import receptor structure and function is little different from the export receptor because I told you if RAN GTP bound then the import receptor removes the cargo. But export receptor doesn't work in that way. Export receptor works in a way that the job is to transfer something outside. So export receptor can bind the cargo and RAN GTP at the same time without any problem and that's what they have to do so what happens during export we have ran gtp attached in one part of the export receptor and cargo to one part of the export receptor okay so this is for the export okay and then it will be transported out so transferred out into the cytosol while in the cytosol the ran gtp gets hydrolyzed with the help of gap that will cause the cargo to be delivered out and then again we have an export receptor free the free export receptor will take entry inside the nucleus so by looking at this overall cycle one thing you can say is that nucleus is kind of free for different proteins and molecules to take entry but it's very specific for molecules to exit the nucleus and it's quite logical because if you think importing things inside the nucleus there are different proteins and stuff that may be required or may not but while exporting there are mrna and important messengers that should be transported out of this nucleus very cautiously now if they don't have a tight regulation over the export then it might create a misleading a bad effect to the cell let's say an mrna is transported out of the nucleus without being properly edited and, and spliced, then that will create a big issue. That's the reason there's a tight control of export rather than import. But in both the cases, import receptors and export receptors play a vital role along with the RAN GTP and RAN GDP for controlling the cycle of movement of proteins in and out of the nucleus. But remember one more thing, is the RAN GTP is the only form while attached to the export receptor will get the signal to be transported out of the nucleus okay and the same RAN GTP while bound to the import receptor will cause the cargo protein to be released and delivered inside the nucleus so I hope you understand the overall idea of nuclear transport of proteins if you like this video please hit the like button share this video with your friends and subscribe to my channel to get more and more videos like that Thank you.